Good morning, friends. Welcome to our Tuesday Bible study on this last Tuesday in the first month of 2021. I want to share with you a passage from uh, the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning with the 31st verse. Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Now, I hear people all the time talk about, I know that they're supposed, I'm supposed to do more. I know I, I'm supposed to read the Bible. I know this, I know that, I know the other, but I just don't have time. I'm so busy. I've got so many things going on. And so years ago, I sat down and I, I figured all of this stuff up. And I'm going to share with you what I discovered. And I think you'll find that you have more time than you think you do. There are 168 hours in a week. Now, if you sleep a full eight hours every night, there's 112 hours left. If you work a full 40-hour week, then you're left with 72 hours. Now, that's when you start picking your priorities. 72 hours when you're not working, and you're not asleep. This is your time. It's the same as having a little over 10 hours a day, seven days a week. It's, it's like a three 24-hour days. And it's time that's all about priorities. So do you get everything done that you need to do? Do you do for the kingdom what you need to be doing? Do you Make time to do for others the things that you need to do for them. Because if you're going to make really good use of that time, then you need to manage it well. We schedule time for the things that are pressing or that are important to us in the, in the ways of the world, you know. And we get them all on our calendars. But do you schedule time for things that are of eternal importance? Do you schedule time every day for prayer? Do you schedule time for reading the scriptures and, and studying the word of God to, to know what Jesus said, to pray over it, to, to think on it and, and dwell on it and let the spirit reveal to you what God needs you to do it and what you need to be doing in your life to draw closer to him. You also need to schedule time for some solitude, just for, for alone with God time. And when you do that, God will reward you. He, re he rewards all of his children when we are striving to grow closer to him, when we're striving to learn more of his will for our lives. Because when we actively participate in our spiritual growth, we are rewarded. Jesus said, those who seek will find. You're not just going to accidentally stumble on it. You need to be seeking. Those who knock will be allowed in. You have to, you have to go to that door. You have to knock. You have to ask in order to receive, Jesus said. So we need to be doing these things. And we only have 
one chance at today. And so we need to make it count. You know, I, 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 I hear people and have heard them this week say, well, I know I should do this. And, you know, or when things slow down and I have some time, I'll do it. Or I'll, I'll get around to it. You know, but all of these things really defeat our spirit. You know, we, we can't live in a, a perpetual attitude of I'll get to it or, or one day, especially not when it comes to our spiritual growth and, and our spiritual well-being and our work for the kingdom. Uh, we can't live with this arrogant attitude of, of uh, immortality, you know, uh, taking our day for granted. Think, well, well we've all, I'll always got tomorrow to get around to it uh, because we don't. In the fourth chapter of uh, James's letter, beginning with the 13th verse, James writes, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we'll go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now your boast is arrogant, and all such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. When we know to take time, when we know that we need to be praying, when we know that we need to be studying the scripture, when we know that we need to take time alone with God and we don't do it, then we're hurting ourselves. We're stunning our spiritual growth. And every day that passes is gone. Every moment that passes is gone forever. It, it cannot be reclaimed and it can't be lived over again. And Let's face it, friends, a lot of opportunities never present themselves to us again. So we need to be doing what Jesus said and watching, paying attention, staying awake, aware of what's going on around us, of, of what the Spirit is uh, calling us to do or to be in any given moment. Be alert to the possibilities of working for God and working in the kingdom. Even small moments are important. Small things. Jesus said, if all you have to give in, in a situation where you see a need and all you can give is a cup of cold water, if you give it in my name, you will not lose your reward. No gift is too small. No, no expression of encouragement or, or of love is wasted. We need to take advantage of every moment. We just have to stop living as though we, we've got forever to do what really needs to be done in our spiritual growth and for our own spiritual discernment. And we need to start living each day as though this could be our last one here. Then we will wind up leaving nothing undone. Then we will start realizing all the possibilities around us. Then, when the time does come, when it comes for us, we won't be caught sleeping. We will be wide awake. We will know and be known. And we will be rewarded for all of that. 72 hours of priorities, 10 hours a day. We've got plenty of time to pray. We have plenty of time to read the scriptures and study. We have plenty of time to take a moment aside in solitude with God. To do as he said, just be still in his presence and know that he is God. Won't you take time to do that? You schedule all the other stuff in. Take time to schedule into each day a time for prayer a time for reading the Word of God and reflecting on it, and some time just to breathe in His presence and be still. Do this, and you will find blessings beyond 
measure. Ask and you will receive. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Seek and you will find. Sola gratia, friends.